And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. The first day of creation dealt with the creation of light, day and night, and the law of separation, all as activities related to the gonadal activities, yet also within a framework of awe for understanding. The second day again deals with separation, but within a context of knowing, of consciousness. The first day also dealt with understanding, however, in the overall, light as understanding per se. The second day is considered only in the context of the creation of heaven and earth. When we consider that the cells of Lydig are in and above the gonads, the operations of the first and second day must not only complement each other but continue the creative functions of the first day, the division process. In this second day we notice that the firmament was first created and then the waters were divided so as to have waters below as well as above the firmament. Since the waters relate to the activities of spirit, then there came into being a division of such activities. Since the only thing created in the first day heretofore was light, or understanding, then the second day can only be setting the framework for comprehension of this light, and it is. Here there are created three levels of consciousness, by which there could be understood the three natures of the triune God. The firmament is called heaven, and from the readings we understand that heaven means a state of consciousness. This firmament is the basis or framework within which man may know God, it refers to the basis of, or the understanding in, the soul. This is the firmament, or foundation, for our being companions with God. In this second day we find the waters under the firmament were used to bring forth the earth, therefore this section can only relate to the earthy, or conscious, mind. The soul mind, say the readings, is the subconscious and thus is the firmament. The waters above the firmament then can only relate to the superconscious mind which in no way can be related to a manifested world, thus there is nothing further said about that in the story of creation. Perhaps, for us, we may better understand these divisions from the following, where the firmament is considered in connection with the subconscious or soul mind. Psychic means of the spirit or soul, for cooperation of the phenomena, or manifestation of the workings of those forces within the individual. The mind may be classified into the two forces, that between the physical and soul, and that between the soul and spirit force. The conscious means that that is able to be manifested in the physical plane through one of the senses. The subconscious is that lying between the soul and spirit forces within the entity. In the creation, we find each given condition has its condition and its attributes with its law. In regard to the spirit entity, or the superconscious, we find. This is only the portion that develops other than in Earth's plane. Four souls' development is in the Earth's plane. The spirit entity is in the spirit plane. The operations of the three levels of consciousness are further shown here. In the consciousness of earthly or material forces there enters all the attributes of the physical, fleshly body. In the subconscious there enters the attributes of soul forces, and of the conscious forces. In the superconscious there enters the subconscious forces, and spiritual discernment and development. These quotes help us to conceive of three levels of cognition, which we correlate with the three divisions of the waters. What we have not done is show the relevancy of this second day's efforts to the cells of Lydig. The readings associate the influence of the planet Neptune with this center as an activity of development phase of the soul in that of Neptune as of mystic. Traditionally Neptune is associated with water and is one of the Earth's elements. It is that force water by which not only life is sustained, but also that same force we give to the forms of thought patterns which we become in the formation of our temperaments. It is the mystic force of life itself. We related the first day of creation to the activity of the gonads with the separation of light. In the second day we associate the action of giving life to any form created by the gonadal actions with the actions of the Leiden, as we find in this. 
we see manifested in a physical body through the glandular system, as the activity of conception, the dividing of the activity of the gland itself, that brings conception. Thus, this is the first of the centers from which arises all that is movement, in the experience. Then, all of the centers of activity which spirit first moves from the Leiden, the center of the spiritual forces, the brain, or the highest force individually or personally, then the others in their order, as they control themselves. This reading gives a clear statement about the two activities of the combined cellular structure of the cells of Leidig and the gonads. However, a more direct reference to the actions arising from the Leiden and stated as being correct is in this. The life force rises directly from the Leidig gland through the gonads, thence to pineal, and then to the other centers. It should be noted that while we associated the dividing attributes of the gonads with the division of light, as it enters the body, and not as a part of the actual first day's creation efforts. In the same vein, we handle the life force in the water as an earth element to either created thought forms or offspring. Our focus has been on a relatively comparable activity. Why do all my big experiences begin near the water or on the water? Is not water the mother, the life of all material experiences? Is it not a natural law? Is it not as he, the great teacher gave? That ye are born of the spirit and of water. Hence all become a part of the creation as related to manifestation. For as was given, which, to be sure, is the symbol of man's experience, the firmament above the firmament, and these were separated and came into what ye know as materiality. Hence water, the most flexible, the most solid, the most destructive yet the most necessary, three-fourths of the universe, three-fourths of the human body, three-fourths of all that is, contained in water. Hence all expression as manifested in a three-dimensional world arises from same water. For, it is three-fourths of the whole. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The mother of all material forces or three-dimensional activities, that is, water. Water is the sources of influence or force in materiality. For each soul is born of water and of blood. Blood is the material, water is the ethereal, or the spiritual forces, as may be manifested, or that are as shadows of those that take hold upon the minds and the souls and the hearts of men. Neptune as the greater influence. Hence the intuitive forces, the mystic influences in the experiences of the entity. The entity is greatly influenced at times by water as a creative force. Water is the basis of expression of creative influences or forces in matter in the earth, it becomes as an expression in the experience of the entity for harmonious experiences. In the influences which arise innately and manifestedly from Neptune, we find the forces or powers of the earthly mother, water, as an influence. The Neptune influence, pertaining to water and the mystic. In Neptune we find the interest in those things of a mystical nature. In Neptune the power of water, or of the influences about same, the creative expression, the ability to aid in reviving or in giving life to things. The spirit moved upon the waters that it became material. So, as the spirit moves upon the mental forces of an individual soul, there may come into manifestations those things that give blessings, or that bring destructive forces. Hence surround the activities with those things that are constructive, not merely in the material sense, but in the mental and spiritual also. For these are the representation within the awareness or consciousness of the individual of the Godhead, the body, the Father, the mind, the Christ, the Son, the soul, the Holy Spirit through which all approach is made. For even as the spirit moved, matter came into being. So as the mind became the way, the truth, the light in materiality, as ye apply same in thy experiences day by day ye become aware. Then as ye hath given, and as ye heard so oft, the kingdom is within. Turn ye within, for there in the temple of thine own body is the temple of the living God, where he hath promised to meet thee, to commune with thee, and to give thee the supply of all that may be needed within thine experience. When there was brought into being that as of the projection of that created by that created, this took a period of evolutionary, or, 
as would be in the present year, four score and six year. That is brought into being as was of the creating of that that became a portion of, of that that was already created by the creator, that brought into being as were those of the forces of nature itself. God said, Let there be light and there was light. God said, Let there be life and there was life. Were the thought forms that were able to push themselves out of themselves inhabited by souls, or were they of the animal kingdom? That is created by that created, of the animal kingdom. That created as by the Creator, with the soul. What was the spirit that moved that made rebellion? The spirit of God, or the spirit of self. This becomes self-evident even when we look about us in our own experience day by day. They that have the spirit of God have the spirit of truth, have the spirit of Christ, have the spirit of construction. They that have the spirit of rebellion have the spirit of hate, the spirit of confusion and seek self-glory rather than peace, harmony and understanding. Thus as has been indicated, the spirit pushed into matter, and became what we see in our three-dimensional world as the kingdoms of the earth. The mineral, the vegetable, the animal, a three-dimensional world. And that which beareth witness is the spirit of truth, the spirit of light. For he said, Let there be light, and there was light. Then indeed there is no power that emanates that is not from God. Then what is this spirit of rebellion, what is this spirit of hate? What is this spirit of self-indulgence? What is this spirit that makes men afraid? Selfishness. Allowed, yes, of the Father. For, as given, he has not willed that the souls should perish, but that we each should know the truth, and the truth would make us free. Of what? Selfishness. Then we should each know that the sin which lies at our door is ever the sin of selfishness, self-glory, self-honor. Comment upon the following. Is it worthy of expansion, that is, does it carry any light of truth? The Creator, in seeking to find or create a being worthy of companionship, realized that such a being would result only from a free will exercising its divine inheritance, and through its own efforts find its Maker. Thus, to make the choice really a divine one caused the existence of states of consciousness that would indeed tax the free will of a soul, thus light and darkness. Truly, only those tried so as by fire can enter in. The only variation that we would make is that all souls in the beginning were one with the Father. The separation, or turning away, brought evil. Then there became the necessity of the awareness of selves being out of accord with, or out of the realm of blessedness, and, as given of the Son, yet learned he obedience through the things which he suffered. Come, my children! Ye no doubt have gained from the comment this day a new initiate has spoken in or through this channel. Halaliel, that was with those in the beginning who warred with those that separated themselves and became as naught. The manifestations in the earth that are good, and there are some that call all good, are of God, and the variations in the manifestations, and the ability to discern that which will lead to the light, or to God and that away from the knowledge of the Father, are the fundamentals in the next lesson. God is an all-wise, all-inclusive, all-manifesting force in the experience of man. The Father is that loving influence in the experience of those that seek Him. God is a fact. The Father, those that seek may know the manifestations, how and what they are. As the awareness comes by separation, which is being manifested in materiality, as we know it in the present, there is the necessity of the sojourning in each experience for the developments of the influences necessary in each soul's environ, each soul's attributes, to become again aware of being in the presence of the Father. Is it true that day and night are condensed or miniature copies of incarnations into the earth and interplanetary, or spiritual sojourns, they in turn being miniature copies of what took place in the beginning. Very good, if you understood just what all this means. It's a very good illustration of that which has just been given, as to how there is the evolution of the soul, evolution of the mind, but not evolution of matter save through mind, and that which builds same. Are we to understand that evil existed before the creation of the world, and that it, the devil, was sent into the world? How readest thou? As given from the beginning, by becoming aware in a material world is, or was, 
The only manner or way through which spiritual forces might become aware of their separation from the spiritual atmosphere, the spiritual surroundings, of the Maker. What has been given as the truest of all that has ever been written in Scripture? God does not will that any soul should perish. But man, in his headstrongness, hearkens off to that which would separate him from his Maker. He has not willed that any soul should perish, but from the beginning has prepared a way of escape. What, then, is the meaning of the separation? Bringing into being the various phases that the soul may find in its manifested forms the consciousness, an awareness of its separation, and itself, by that through which it passes in all the various spheres of its awareness. Hence the separation, and light and darkness. Darkness, that it had separated, that a soul had separated itself from the light. Hence he called into being light, that the awareness began. Hence we look out and see the heavens, the stars, and, as the psalmist has said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork, as day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. 